what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions on the call of duty black ops cold war beta yeah. So if you've been playing on ps4 you've had two weekends of black ops cold war beta if you're on any other platform you've just had the one but honestly i've had a ton of fun with the black ops cold war beta and i wanted to give you guys my sort of thoughts and opinions and sort of what i'm anticipating for the full release of the game now i'm gonna break this down into the pros and the cons of this beta uh, but again ultimately i had a lot of fun okay i had a lot of fun with it with the game uh, but these are just my impressions from the beta i think i got to level 21 or 22 which i know is not max level or whatever and tons of players have played way more than me but i also like have a job and like i have to you know go to work and and all this other stuff so uh i think i played a decent amount certainly enough to give uh a first impressions and to get a pretty good idea of how i think the game is gonna play out so let's start with the pros let's start with the good stuff right i think that's important uh the maps look amazing and this is something that treyarch always does really well infinity ward releases some solid maps but they're always very like brown and gray and dark and not very colorful but this game has beautiful maps there's lush greenery there's uh you know miami was a really awesome map with use of like neon lighting and indoor environments really really nice maps um really really great there's no doors anymore there's no doors anymore yes dude thank god i'm so excited for it's so funny call of duty like created a problem and then removed it and now everybody's excited it's like we like that's really that's how how low the bar is right like they're the ones causing their own problems and then fixing their own problems and then they get praised regardless there's no doors which is incredible at least not in the maps i play there may be other game modes i didn't play all the game modes there may be game modes where there are much bigger maps that maybe have doors i didn't see any i don't think there are any um and the maps are for the most part three lane maps but they still feel fresh you know if you played uh, for example infinite warfare that game had the most boring three lane maps in the universe there was no they weren't inspired they were I, they're all forgettable i couldn't tell you a single map on that on that game it, they were garbage right so there, this isn't the case for all three lane maps but in this game a lot of them are three lanes and they did feel sort of fresh and new and, and exciting and not immediately trash like we saw from modern warfare so the maps i'm relatively excited for obviously we didn't get to play all of them so we've got more to come the next thing i want to talk about as a pro is the game in general just looks and sounds amazing right like like from a technical standpoint um the graphics are great the sounds are great and of course this is going to be even better on ps5 the next generation of xbox uh or if you're playing on an incredible gaming computer then this game is going to look absolutely mind-blowing which is super super exciting this is the best call of duty has ever looked and uh it definitely shows and however I did play on ps4 obviously and um you know i think that the ps4 players may struggle a little bit with some of the uh, graphical intensity of the game i for reference have a ps4 slim i don't have a pro so keep that in mind the next thing i want to talk about is the ninja perk ninja is back as a perk and we needed this this is what caused in my opinion this is what caused so much camping in modern warfare besides the fact that the shotguns were powerful and like it was a dark game and you could hide in corners i think the fact that ninja wasn't being wasn't a perk is what made people just not move they just were too scared to move in that game and you know if you were able to camp the entire time you could do really really well um ninja is a perk again i'm excited for that some people are talking about how they wish it were dead silence and not ninja so if you guys don't know uh some call of duty games have a perk called dead silence where your footsteps uh, make no noise at all uh, in this game ninja silences your sprinting footsteps to a very low level you can still hear it with a headset but it's very low and you can definitely tell the difference between uh your footsteps with ninja and an enemy without ninja right it's, it's obvious night and day which is good um much better than modern warfare and so the fact that it's back is very exciting i'm very happy about that another pro is the field mic this is a piece of equipment in the game it's actually your field upgrade so kind of like the perk that you can equip for for your class it's almost like a specialist almost right it's not quite as powerful as specialists from like um the other black ops games but uh they're black ops three and four i should say so no specialists that's a pro incredible i love that at least 
from what I can see it doesn't look like there are any um, but the field upgrade field mic is super good uh, it's super good I think if it's in the hands of a good player the field mic is by far the best field upgrade in the entire game and honestly they're probably going to nerf it for the official launch the radius is just so so big I you know I hope they don't nerf it because if you are a decent player and you have some map awareness and some spawn awareness uh, you can really abuse it and I think that's gonna separate a good player from a bad player but knowing Call of Duty anything that gives good players an advantage they're gonna probably nerf it which is unfortunate but that is the way it is um, another thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> the score streaks the kill streaks whatever you want to call them the point system in this game is really really good so if you guys didn't know the way that you earn kill streaks or score streaks in this game is uh they never reset over time um and so you know they reset once you get them right so if you get a uav then the uh the counter for your uav resets which is good so you can get them multiple times per game um but you also get a multiplier for actually getting a kill um a kill streak right so every consecutive kill you get without dying it multiplies uh, the number of points that you get towards your kill streaks and i think that this is a really good system i'm uh, it seems like obvious now looking back uh, that this was a system that they should have implemented a while ago but this is a system that rewards good players for being good meaning you're going to get your kill streaks sooner if you're a good player um but it also still supports those players who are struggling if you're not very good at the game you're still going to get your uav you're still going to get that uh rcxd you know things like that uh, and so i think this is a nice balance between score streaks and kill streaks um in the past i've always been team kill streak you know i've always wanted to see incredible results from a nice kill streak um I know a lot of people may feel more strongly towards score streaks because it encourages, you know, um, playing the objective and things like that. And I totally understand the uh, the attraction there. But I think the way that this game does it is good, and I'm excited to see what is to come. And finally, the game is fun. Like I actually just this is I know this is like a very general subjective thing, um, but I enjoyed playing this game more than I enjoyed playing Modern Warfare multiplayer around this time last year. So that's a good sign I'm very excited uh, for this game I'm very excited to just get my hands on it and really start investing my time into the multiplayer mode and that's not this I couldn't say that about all the other Call of Duties right um, I, I couldn't say that about things like Infinite Warfare right or Black Ops 4 even I didn't like Black Ops 4 I thought it was a bad game it was boring whatever regardless I'm excited uh, for this I think this is gonna be a pretty good year for Call of Duty now let's talk about the cons of the beta and things that I think when the official game comes out are gonna be a big problem with the game and hopefully uh, I'm wrong about these but um, I am very concerned about a couple of things so the first and foremost thing uh, and we're gonna talk about skill based matchmaking I know you guys are already expecting that I'm gonna talk about that later because you already know the first thing I want to talk about is class balance and I'm very concerned about class balance and I'm going to show you why in just a second but um, we didn't really see this issue in the beta because not everything was unlocked but it does seem to me like there's a clear best option for every single slot which means everyone's probably going to be uh, running around with virtually the exact same class except maybe they'll change the gun up once in a while. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be that much variety as far as creative class goes which is unfortunate i would like to see there be a little bit of variety obviously i like it when there is a clear best gun so i know that i'm not at a disadvantage when i'm in a gunfight i know that i have the best gun like if you played the original black ops you knew like the famas was the gun you should pretty much be using or the ak-74u right i think that there being one or two dominant guns in a call of duty is pretty healthy for the game um but uh you know i think in this game we may struggle because it just seems so obvious what the best guns are uh or at least the best um perks and things of that nature so here is some footage that i recorded of the uh Krita class system i really liked the milano here or milano i don't know how to say that it's basically the uh the uzi this thing is insane when you get some really good um some really good equipment or attachments on this thing but uh regardless let me show you guys what i'm talking about as far as class balance goes also the xm4 was crazy good um i'm gonna skip this part of the uh recording here let's look at the tactical right okay you have the choice between only four things and again this is a beta so i don't know if they're gonna add more later but you have stun grenade stim shot smoke grenade or decoy grenade stim shot is so obviously the best choice here it's so insanely obvious what the best choice is that no one is ever gonna play with a stun gate stun smoke or decoy they're just not gonna do it right 
it's just you're disadvantaging dis you're at a disadvantage if you don't use stim shot so immediately the tactical like you already know what you're going to use as far as lethal goes we have frag c4 molotov and semtex now we didn't get to use the semtex at least i didn't um but i think obviously the c4 and the semtex are going to be the two that you use most often unless the molotov turns out to have a huge aoe damage with with the um with the fire spread it just seems obvious to me usually c4 are the best uh for like detonating certain objectives and things like that right and the the, the fact that you can throw them and detonate them so fast i think it's a clear winner here right again maybe this isn't so obvious but i think it's relatively obvious field upgrade this one is obvious to me the proximity mines are easily countered all you have to do is duck and you don't die trophy system may be good for like pro uh for pro events and things like that um but sam turret's useless because you can shoot down stuff easily gas mine and jammer are just average field mic is insanely good it's a deployable uav for the most part right i think field mic is far in a way better than everything else on this list and that could change depending on how they change some of the things after this beta but it seems obvious to me that field mic is the way to go let's move on to um the perks this is the perk one slot look there's only four perks right engineer paranoia tactical mask and flak jacket and we've seen in previous call of duties engineer and paranoia we've seen other perks like this and typically they're not used that much right maybe engineer a little bit uh but tactical mask and flak jacket are going to be obvious choices here right and there's a wild card in this game which i'll show you i'll just jump to that now uh, but there's four wild cards and the perk greed wild card it literally says pick up an extra perk from each perk category and i think that that's the best wild card in the game now mainly we used uh danger close throughout this beta because that's the first one that you get and that gives you twice their grenades um and max ammo you start with max ammo which is good but having double the perks like if you put on perk greed you get half the perks in the game right like it you get half the perks of the entire game so if we go back here right um obviously if you if you can pick two of these you're gonna pick flak jacket and tactical mask so you're completely immune right now maybe you don't need tactical mask because uh everyone's gonna be running stim shot so maybe you'll just throw on engineer and flak jacket right that's a that's an option in the perk two slot we have scavenger assassin tracker and quartermaster now scavenger is really good if you're not going to use the wild card that gives you extra ammo and quartermaster is pretty much the same thing you'll just you'll just have to wait a little bit longer to use your equipment but in this perk category uh, i think you're obviously going to be seeing a scavenger and assassin right typically you don't this tracker perk where you see enemy footsteps in uh, in previous call of duties we've seen this is relatively useless right it's just not that good maybe if you're playing search and destroy or something like that you may want this um but it is what it is i think really players are going to use scavenger and tracker or something along those lines um the second perk slot there's really nothing that interesting in here to me honestly um and then if we look at the third perk slot you see um gung-ho ghost cold-blooded and ninja and all four of these are quite powerful but i think everyone's gonna be running ninja and if you're running the perk uh the or the um what is it the uh, wild card that gives you double double perks you're gonna run ninja ghost or ninja gung-ho like it's just obvious right and so i think there's a there's a big problem here where if they don't actually have more perks um and, and more like equipment and stuff like that uh, it just seems like you're just gonna copy and paste the same class over and over and over again because the the best um thing for each slot seems self-evident to me right it just it just does um I don't know that's going to depend on i guess how the wild cards actually go there is a wild card um for having uh three additional attachment slots for your gun that could be the better option better than perk greed depending on how dominant the gunplay is in this game and i wouldn't be surprised but like i said regardless you can if you put on perk greed it, from what i'm reading here it says you should be able to have two perks in each slot which is double which is half the perks in the game right so yeah i'm concerned about class balance and i hope you guys can understand where i'm coming from and why i think that i would like to see a little bit more variety amongst the players and i'm not sure if there's enough here for that to be the case now the next con i want to talk about is uh is the grenades i feel like the grenades were a bit too strong um again this was the beta so nobody was really using uh, i don't think anybody was using flak jacket i don't remember what level you unlock it at but um yeah they're just the fact that you everyone ran around with double grenades because the first wild card you get gives you double uh lethals and the fact that no one had flak jacket made grenades seem very powerful um i think when the full game comes out this won't really be an issue but 
um, I think the grenade magnetism in this game and if, if you guys aren't familiar with what that is essentially it's where you throw a frag grenade and if it lands near an enemy it will sort of roll slightly closer to them uh, to increase the effectiveness of grenades because there have been plenty of Call of Duty's where grenades were just complete trash like their their damage radius was so tiny and you just had to be so accurate um, that they were useless right so I think um, grenade magnetism is um, is used to counterbalance the fact that grenades typically are bad but I think in this game maybe it's just turned up a bit too much uh, I don't know we'll have to wait and see for the full game of course like I said uh, if everyone on drama flak jacket and no one has the double grenades then I don't think it'll be a real issue another con and this is something that I actually abused in the beta and I actually really enjoyed it um, so I'm kind of being uh, you know hypocritical here but the rocket launcher reload could be canceled very quickly uh, which made it super easy to shoot down streak so literally as soon as uh, I had uh, gung-ho on most of my classes for a majority of my playtime which lets you switch um, weapons faster so as soon as the announcer said that there was an enemy UAV or counter UAV or anything like that I would switch to my rocket look up shoot it down and I could shoot down multiple UAVs in like fractions of a second because as soon as you start reloading like one second later you'll see that the reload um, is finished on the at the bottom of the screen you'll see that there is a, now a new rocket in the chamber even though the animation isn't finished you can double press uh, triangle to cancel that reload and I'm sure many of you are familiar with this in previous Call of Duties but the point is you could reload cancel the rocket launcher very fast in this game and that makes it super easy to shoot down higher kill streaks like the attack helicopter and things like that um, and so for me I like I said I abused this in the beta because I noticed it and I realized hey I could just shoot everything down and, and it'll really help the team but um I think that it kind of de it devalues the the work that you put in to get things like counter UAVs and stuff like that um the other con I want to talk about are the spawns on TDM they were definitely questionable hopefully this gets better with time and I think the more data that um, they accumulate uh, they're gonna get better with this because they'll know not to use certain spawns that they've already programmed but sometimes I would spawn like right in the middle of the enemies or I would spawn so far away by the time I run to the other side of the map the spawns have already flipped and so yeah TDM spawns were interesting to say the least I wasn't that excited about it um, domination spawns were okay but um, it is what it is let's talk about drop shotting it looks to me like you can't drop shot this year which is unfortunate I feel like drop shotting is a skill that if you work on you should be able to use it meaning if you're shooting somebody and they have the ability and the thought process to actually do perform a drop shot which is you know if you're running on a corner and you encounter an enemy if you quickly lay down while shooting um, that usually in other call of duties that there it's been shown that is um, a good way to avoid getting shot uh, but also to win the gunfight and uh, it's a skill that you have to develop over time uh, some players may not call it a skill but to have the knowledge and awareness to actually do that is in fact a skill whether you want to acknowledge it or not so yeah in modern warfare you could um, drop shot while aim aiming down sight how good it was was really up for debate honestly but in this game it looks like when you attempt to drop shot your gun goes to your side which means you're now hip firing instead of aiming down sight which makes your accuracy much worse and if the other player doesn't drop shot their accuracy is unaffected so um, it seems to me like like they've completely removed the ability to drop shot in this game which is unfortunate because again I think the more things that separate a good player from a bad player in a game is good um, so yeah unfortunately they seem to have removed that it is what it is um, the other thing and we obviously have to talk about this skill based matchmaking has no place in, a, in in pubs right it just doesn't let's just be real other Call of Duty's have had it and it's not a mention it's not a matter of does it have skill based matchmaking or not because all Call of Duty's have had a form of skill based matchmaking this is objectively true it's the degree to which that the matchmaking influ is influenced by your skill right and in some Call of Duty games your skill is obviously a big factor in who you play with and that seems to be the case in black ops cold war uh the overwhelming majority of Mo of call of duty players um or at least the ones who are most invested in the game and the ones who enjoy the game the most um are, have made their position on this clear and that is that skill-based matchmaking has no place in pubs which i agree i think that there's if you're just gonna play a casual game of Call of Duty I shouldn't have to go up against Clayster right like let like come on you're if you're not why do I have to play against people who are acting like pro players when they're not right it just it's just not fun for anybody it's not fun for them it's not fun for me everyone has to be a sweaty tryhard and you know everyone ends the game with a 1 KD right that's the that's the reality of skill based matchmaking if you're always playing against players of your skill level then everyone's always gonna do roughly the same over time which is 
not fun, right? I want to have those games where I completely pub stomp. And then of course there's going to be the other end of the spectrum where I just get destroyed and, and that's okay. I would rather those extremes, um, because those few games where you feel like a God, those are the ones that make you come back and want to keep playing, right? Because you get that huge, like dopamine rush and you're super excited because you just creamed everybody and it was amazing right that's what gets people hooked on call of duty that's why i was hooked on modern warfare 2 back, back in the day because i could get that harrier chopper gunner new combo and just destroy everybody and feel like an absolute savage uh when in reality i could only do that once every 20 games or so um, and so it would keep me chasing that high for those matches and so it's better for the player for player retention um, to not have skill based matchmaking i think unless they release data proving otherwise i don't see how that's not the case right so skill based matchmaking it's bad it's bad for the player it's bad for the game it's bad for the longevity of the game it's bad for the interest of the game uh it's bad for there's no one who really benefits from this other than trash players um but even in the long run this actually hurts bad players because it gives no incentive to get better right and if they don't get better then they're not going to see progress and if they don't see progress they don't play your game because why would you keep playing something that you're not getting better at right um it is what it is so skill based matchmaking has no place in the game it's unfortunate to see it hopefully they understand this and remove it i don't see why they would i mean if they don't they're obviously just ignoring the player base at that point um the way that we can get around this is by just including a ranked playlist just put a ranked playlist with skill based matchmaking like that's the point of ranked right is to play other players that give you a challenge um and so you can have best of both worlds if you like skill based matchmaking and you like to be challenged every game then if they just implement a ranked playlist then boom you're good now you can show off you can show how good you are etc um so yeah terrible terrible choice of adding that and finally the biggest flaw and the biggest con with this game and i said this probably the past two or three years call of duty is on a one-year cycle and the the era of one-year games has come and gone right uh call of duty blew up during the golden age of yearly releases but um nobody cares anymore like Here's the problem, right? You could jump on Fortnite right now and you can still have all the progress, skins, cosmetics, all that good stuff, all your achievements and everything like that from when you first started playing Fortnite to this day, meaning any progress that you make is kept with you for years. And with Call of Duty, next year no one's gonna care about black ops cold war which means all the progress you made getting to max level unlocking all the stuff getting diamond camo whatever poof gone it's gone who cares no one cares it's over it's gone and so all your achievements are reset every single year which gives me not a real good incentive to want to play it right if i jump on apex or fortnite or whatever i know that my progress is going to carry on for infinity even when fortnite released season two right uh, or the whatever part two whatever they called it after that black hole event um it's obvious to me that you know you still get to keep all your stuff right which is key and call of duty is really dropping the ball with this one and it's been years now the gaming industry has moved away from yearly releases for the most part um and all the big games aren't on yearly releases just look at twitch look at the best games on there it's not yearly releases right and so i think that's the biggest flaw with call of duty is that they keep pumping them out and i have no incentive to invest hardcore into the game like i used to right if i if i was in high school or middle school then sure i've got nothing better to do i'll just play call of duty after school but i have a job i work i do other things and i don't have that much time to invest in gaming and so when i do i want to invest it in a game where i know my progress is going to carry with me for as long as I get to play that game and unfortunately next year I'm not going to play Black Ops Cold War right just like with Modern Warfare right now if you're still playing Modern Warfare working towards that Damascus camo you might as well just stop because it doesn't matter if you get it or not because you're not going to have a use for it moving forward right and I think if uh, Call of Duty could make a, a fix for this they could just you know sync all of your progress to the Call of Duty.com server and then when you log into every new Call of Duty you get some sort of in-game cosmetic for all your previous achievements that would immediately fix this problem um but they haven't done that so i yeah that's the biggest flaw with cold war is that next year no one cares and um it makes wanting to invest time into the game very difficult when there are so many better options where i can invest my time and see my progress and have and keep my account getting better and better over time for years to come rather than just for you know 10 to 12 months anyway with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on it it really does help out the channel a ton 
subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of duty black ops cold war video of course comment down below telling me your opinions on black ops cold war i would love to hear them drop them down below did you enjoy the beta did you hate it are you over call of duty or are you coming back for this release like i said i'm excited for the game but we'll just have to see when it comes out as always my social media links are in the description below make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter uh my discord server and over on twitch where i'll probably live stream call of duty at some point in the near but near future and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace